Hello everyone, welcome. My name's Kit Walker, and today I want to show you my fractal rhythm generator, which is something I put together in the music software called Ableton Live, which is a fantastic piece of software that almost everybody uses these days. And one of the coolest things about it is that you can combine loops of any different length and they synchronize together. And that's uh, exactly what I wanted to do with this idea. So Ableton Live works perfectly for it. Now the way it works is I have different channels here with different percussion sounds on them. I have two channels of kick drum. I have four channels of snare drum. I have a high tom. I have two channels of stick and various other channels, some hi-hat and then some percussion sounds as well over here. So like I said, the vertical channels contain the different sounds. They're all mixable. The snare drum, the toms, and so forth. And then each loop, which is in each one of these little clips they're called, is of a particular length which is measured in 16th notes. So if you can see on these little squares, these are each called a clip and each one has a number on it that shows how many 16th notes long it is. So here on this particular kick drum, it says five, which means there's a kick drum every five 16th notes. So you can hear that like this. Now if I go to this one, it's every eight. So these can be whatever length. They can be every 15, 14, 23. It really doesn't matter. But the thing that they all have in common is that there's only one hit on the clip. You can see that down here. It's just a steady pulse. There is no rhythmic variation in these. So as well as 16th notes, I also have two channels here of snare drums that are at the 32nd note level. They're twice as fast. But it's the same principle. I use these to add variety to the basic things that are going on with the other two snare drums. So for example, here's a snare drum every seven sixteenth notes. And then here is a, a snare drum every 15 30 second notes. It's very light because it's more of a ghost note. Now if I put all the snare drums together, it sounds like this. It's like somebody making variation on the snare drum. But remember, all these are just single hits. That's every seven 30-second notes. Now this is every five 16th notes, but it's displaced, which means it starts one 16th note after the beginning. And using displaced beats as well gives even more variety. So let's just look at this for a second just to show you the math involved in compiling these loops on this particular groove here. A 
Okay, so if we want to just narrow this down to the main loops involved, we can listen to these. These are a kick drum on six, a kick drum on eight, a snare every 13, a stick every seven, and a stick every six. So in this uh, instance, we can multiply these numbers together. We multiply 6 times 8 times 13 times 7. That's 4,368 16th notes before the pattern repeats. Now if we wanted to find out how many measures that is in 4-4, four, four, we divide that by 16 because there's 16 16th notes in a measure of 4. And we get 273 measures. Okay, so in 4-4, four, four, we play this. And we're going to have to wait for 273 measures to get back to this. Where all five of those tracks, there are five there all together, where they all hit on the same beat. We can think of each of these loops as a frequency, in other words, how frequently or how often they repeat. In fact, they actually are a frequency because if we speed them up, they become a tone. Here we have a side stick repeating every three sixteenth notes. Now we can double the speed of this And then double it again, and again, and again. Okay, and it goes into a tone. So we can slow back down again from a tone. back to every 3 16th notes. This one over here is 2 16th notes each hit. And we can do the same thing with that one. We can speed it up, double speed it. So that becomes a tone as well. Now if we put both of them together, we're going to find something interesting. Here we speed up the 3 again. And then we play the other one with it. And you notice we have a fifth. Now listen to what we have when we slow them both back down. We have two against three, which makes a polyrhythm, a palindrome, two, two against three. So three against two is a fifth. We can analyze all intervals that way, and if we slow them down, we're going to come up with different rhythms. Okay, so I just want to show you one more. This is a cycle that happens every 5 16th notes, and then we'll speed that up, and we'll see where that leaves us. So here it is every 5 16th notes. Okay, so now if we speed it up, the two and we get this. A major 
major third, and we combine it with the three. We get a sixth. We put all three together. We get a chord. It's like a minor triad. So now if we slow them all back down again, we get this. Do a group of three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Here we have the group of two. And we have the group of five. So remember, that was a minor triad when we had them all playing together several octaves up. So when we put them all three together, we get this. And the length of that loop is 5 times 2 times 3, 30. And after 30 16th notes, this, this rhythm will repeat. So that should make it more clear what I mean when I say harmony is rhythm and rhythm is harmony. Okay, so now I just want to demonstrate to you how that loop we just made with 5 against 3 against 2 is a palindrome, how it's the same backwards as it is forwards. So I made an audio file of the loop as we were listening to it, 5 against 3 against 2. Then I made a, another loop with the audio in reverse. Sounds similar, but let's double check. Let's play them both together. Sure enough, they're the same. So 5 against 3 against 2 is the same backwards as it is forwards. And we'll find that if we try anything against anything, no matter what the length of the loop, no matter what the frequency is, it's always going to be the same backwards as it is forwards, no matter how many loops you combine. That was three loops combined, but we could combine 10, 100, 1,000. They could be in a sequence that's so many measures long that it takes minutes or even hours to repeat. And when we turn the audio file around backwards, we'll find out that it's the exact same backwards as it is forwards. So let's take a little journey through some of these grooves on here. Now, just as we know that the vertical strips are the channels, the horizontal strips are called scenes, where I've combined some different loops together to create these different grooves. I'm just going to kind of move through some of them so you can hear how they fit together. Here's another one. They have them all at the same tempo, but you can vary the tempo to anything. Another one. Now you can even hear a kind of clave happening with the stick sounds, but I'm calling it clave libre, free clave. It's not a cultural thing, it's just polyrhythmic combinations that are palindromic too. The snare drum has a lot of variation in it.
have some conga drums on this one playing over here. reminds me of some Afro pop kind of grooves. So thank you for watching. I hope this at least piqued your interest to know more about fractal rhythm. I'll be explaining a lot more in detail about how it works in some future videos. But I just wanted to introduce you to the way I've been creating some grooves with it. And it's not that this is supposed to replace actual live playing. This isn't really about drum programming so much. It's more about learning to feel rhythm in a new way. And there are many different ways to practice these rhythms and you can invent them yourself too. Uh, but the idea is that as you practice them, this kind of orbital, cyclical, spiraling feeling of rhythm will start to come out in your playing more, and you can free yourself from some of the boxes that maybe you've been trapped in from conditioning of how music is supposed to sound. So anyway, that's the idea behind it, and I look forward to seeing you soon in the future. Please like, share, subscribe, and so forth. Thanks so much. Ciao.